What's up, everybody? I haven't done one of these in a fucking very long time. I don't even remember how we introed the podcast before. I really don't. Start fresh. Uh, so we'll just uh, we'll start uh, brand new. And uh, I have a very I have two very special guests today. I have uh, I'll do them one at a time. My my first. Uh, my Save the first. best for last, Ruby. My, okay, okay. So. So, since I'm saving the, be the best for last, my first guest is Guy Sister Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I was going to go the age route, say older later, but get my mouth shut. <laughs> uh, and then my second guest is uh, Joe Reiser, of course. And um, so we've, we've had a couple of days. I wish that we had a, a, a lot more time, but we'll do a lot more of these. Yeah. And it is now 12. We're supposed to start at 10. It is now 1226, <laughs> and you guys have to leave at like 1 o'clock one o'clock yeah. to catch a quick, flight. This will be a quickie. So we're going to... That's what happens when you 20 years of friendship gets yeah. into a fucking room. It's been a very, very fun uh, couple days. <laughs> yeah, now, I'll, I'll, I'll do, and you guys can interject. I actually would like to hear Joe's perspective of everything, too, as like the guy that's like capturing it all of course. And, and being able to... My here, this will this will be a great way to summarize this. My mom came over last night for dinner, and my mom texted me today, and she goes, "I had such a great time with you and Guy last night. You guys are so funny together. <laughs> it was so nice to see you that happy." And Marissa also said, "She goes, I have never seen you that happy and smiling before, and I don't want anybody around me to take this the wrong way." She goes. You really need some real friends like that in your life. And I was like, well, I have real friends. And she goes, well, everything around you is always Blackstone Labs. Yeah. So it's either somebody that you work with or somebody that works for you. And it's all Blackstone Labs all the time. And she was like, so to see you like outside of that element. Yeah, we didn't talk about work, I don't think, once. No, we were at not at all. Fucking chilling. Um, she was like... She was like seeing you like laugh and everything like that. She was like, that was like the PJ that I fell in love with when we first met. Cause I'm, I suck now. I'm not. <laughs> you don't suck. I, I'm you're too harsh. You got, you're just, you got a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a very, very, very fun couple days and we'll run through it. And I, I, I really do want to hear Joe's perspective of it all, but you guys got cool. in Sunday night and uh, they didn't get in. So last week was North Americans yeah. and New York pro, uh, Big shout out to um, Flex Diesel, by the way. Yeah, boy. Uh, AKA Mandango Diesel. And uh, I'm so, I shouldn't even <laughs> fucking say that. I shouldn't even say that. You probably can. I, I would be like, fuck yeah, it's me. Everyone, and we're not going to talk too long about this, but everyone, Here we I haven't brought this up to him yet. Everyone has been reaching out to me and talking about kickstand, his junk, right? And, and, and like, listen. The guy's got a giant package. Well, in the bodybuilder world, you never see that. No. I figure everyone makes fun of the bodybuilder for, you know, everything shrinks and everything like that. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the perception. So you see that, they're like, what? It's like a small mouth bass in his pants. I am imagining it like, like talking like that, yeah, too. Yeah. Out of water. You know those, like, fishes on the wall that turn and talk? <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> Remember those? You could buy them. Yes, what were those called? The, the, the singing fish. I'm going to order one now. Right <laughs> on Amazon. The don't, don't worry, be happy song. Yes, I forget. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Somebody better send me one of those when they listen to this. Oh, my God. Um. So, <laughs> huge congratulations. <laughs> this has been our week. Yo, and, right and honestly, uh, we already started, so I might as well talk about this for a minute. But a lot of people have said to me, are you going to have a talk with him about that. And I'm like, what? I haven't talked to him about how big his dick is. Yeah, about a congratulations? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Why you just want won. to talk. <laughs> so many people have, have brought it up to me that I have put a lot of thought into it. And the only thing that I can think of is he's got to wear black trunks. Yeah. Because what people are saying is that it's a distraction to how good his, his physique, physique is. Of course. Because you're like, damn, this dude's got a huge fucking package. People say my beard's a distraction. I wish I had his distraction. Yeah, I know. Fuck. I fuck. Like, 
<laughs> dealt the wrong cards. Yeah, so. <laughs> thanks God. Yeah, for all the for all the trolls out there that have seen videos of me, you know that I'm fucking. <laughs> you know that I'm not on that level. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, congratulations to him. North Americans, I had a bunch of athletes out there. They all brought it. It was a, a very, very tiring and just long-ass week. And that was done Saturday. You guys got in Sunday night, and yep. we got right into it. And we went a uh, huge thank you to um, Flex Lewis for yeah, letting us train at the Dragon's Lair. My man. And, man, I haven't been there in, like, four years. Changed and a lot. It is Honestly, it is like arguably the well. Shout out to Flex Peel Miami because I love those guys. Yeah, they're, Jesus they're, and, they're, and, and all them—they're awesome. fucking great. Yeah. If, if Flex's gym is like arguably the best gym down here, it's one. Yeah, okay, I'll go with that. It's he's got all Arsenal equipment, yep. everything, and and he's got some prime pieces. Yep, and some hammer stuff. I think. I mean, he has everything that you could ever want. Yes. Now we're 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 starting our gym, and so the. The actual main floor of his gym, because the building that he's in is way bigger than ours. But the main floor that he's in, which I'm going to try to show you guys real quick before we're, we're out of here, is about the size of how ours is going to be. Okay. So in my head, I was like kind of figuring out where everything's going to go. Like lay it out? I have a good idea anyway, but it was very inspiring to see that. And um, brought Sammy in yep. uh, to train, which there's a lot of funny side stories with that. <laughs> so, I mean... For you being down here for a couple of days, we'll, ha we'll have Guy go first. How was your trip down here? Uh, I mean, traveling is always easy. I travel so fucking much. It doesn't even really bother me. But um, it's honestly cool. I, I, besides the friendship part, like, I've been sponsored before. And, like, you know, I was sponsored early on in my career by a big company. But in the latter years to come, I was always with, like, small startup companies. So it's, like, cool to actually, like, be in a place with an established company and, like, seeing the day to day and how there's like checks and balances and like roles. And, you know, I was always with like small companies, like a couple people. Um, so just to see how things work and the camaraderie with everybody and how everybody gets along and like nobody really shit talks anybody besides kind of Sammy, but um, <laughs> that's in front of his face though. But uh, yes. I mean, you know, like it's just uh, people are like, well, why Blackstone? I'm like, well, I've been with friends with PJ for 20 years and it's not like I never use Blackstone products. I've gotten Blackstone products before. You've given me shit. Like, I know this stuff's good. So just to be down here with, like, the team and a part of the team and a, a team that, you know, I know I know Joe. I know a lot of the guys on the team. Me and you, me and PJ are very close. It's just everything kind of just, like, flow. it wasn't even like there was not one minute of, like, an awkward moment, you know. And Sammy being young, you know, there's a lot of things about Sammy that, that do remind me of myself. Like, he's got a fucking – that kid's got to drive like nobody else. Mm -hmm. Um and I think he learned a lot this weekend, and I think he learned to listen more than talk. And by his post that he did, he definitely uh, learned a lot. And I think that's what it's about. Um, when I was coming up, like, we didn't really have a lot of big fucking bodybuilders that like, helped us, yeah. you know? Everybody was kind of, like, in for it for themselves, mm -hmm. unless you were, you were, like, boys. So I think Sammy kind of took, like, a backseat and, and learned a lot this weekend, which is, you know, I'm on my way out the door. Sammy's fucking in his first Olympia. You know, he's got a great career ahead of him. And, and to see how passionate he is about the sport and training is fucking really cool because there's not a lot of one of the questions I was going to ask PJ is what's the big difference from like when we were training back in the day and like you know how I train now still and like these guys coming up like I know you wanted like certain questions and I, I told Joe and Carson I'm gonna ask PJ like what do you think's the difference between like then and now so it's so weird like how long uh, this is not like another dick sucking thing it's so weird how, like how long that we have been friends for but then could be apart and then talk about the same fucking shit and be on the same page because earlier today this is so weird well last night i said hey let's think about some things to talk about so we're yeah. not just like running Rambling, in circles yeah. on the on the show which we're gonna do anyway and uh, i'm chewing my gum hold on a minute what a fucking loser dave palumbo would be so mad at he would be like spit that out get, get it out now um, <laughs> he made me spit out so many pieces of gum throughout my career. Take that out of your mouth when you're doing interviews. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> shout out to Dave. Uh, Plumbo's Pythons. Um, so this morning, right, Billy Gagliardo, head of the call center, who I just trained for North Americans, fucking awesome guy, hard worker. Very humble, good physique. He, I think, was a little discouraged after North Americans. Best he's ever looked. He won universe. Yeah. And here's the thing. 
Universe last year was a weak ass show. It was a fucking weak yeah. show. It just is how it is. And I told him straight up, I did not train him for Universe. Uh, Shanique's coach Johnny uh, used to train him, and I, I I I I didn't say a word for his entire prep. I think it's very disrespectful when people do that. But in yeah, uh, it gets inside people's heads. It's just not right. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Exactly. Yeah. Too many irons in a fire. <laughs> so Got any more? That's it. All right. <laughs> Too many chiefs, not enough engines. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so when Universe was done, I told him, so here's the deal. If you were one of my clients, I would not have let you compete. You won today because you were the best guy here, but you're not in proper shape. You got a lot of work to do. It's called the best out of the worst. Yeah, and I didn't want him to take it in the wrong way. Yeah. I said, I would love to help you. And he was like, let's get started right now. And we did. We started literally in his room at Universe when we were done, had an amazing, amazing off season. And I will tell you, genetically, he is gonna be a very, very big guy. He's okay. got a big structure, yeah. he's big already. Yep. Yeah, big frame. Um, he, he just has very stubborn, when it comes to losing weight and, and getting in shape, he just has very, very stubborn genetics, comes easier to some people than others. He had to suffer really hard, we tried, all sorts of different things. And I will tell you that of all the people I've ever prepped, it's the hardest prep I've ever had. Really? Wow. The hardest prep I've ever had, the most lot. work that I put in. And it's it's just crazy, like, genetics, right? Yeah. Because, um, like, somebody like Keon Pearson, everything that I said just worked. It yeah. was like yeah. textbook bodybuilding. Boom, it just yeah. worked. Yep. And I told people all the time, like, look, yes, I know what I'm doing, but I'm not why Keon's good. He's just good. Yeah. You know? Billy, I, I, if, if, if you took all of our text messages, it'd probably be like a thousand page book. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. So this morning, he, he, he texts me, it's about six o'clock in the morning, and um, he's like, so I've been doing a lot of thinking, like, what do I have to do to like get to the next level? Like, I know it's not about like just gear and, and eating and everything else. Like, you know that I'll do like whatever it takes. Like, what do I need to do with my training? He's like, I was thinking about getting into some more uh, like high intensity training. Um, you know, like, uh, well, what I brought up was Dante DC training. And it took me a while to think of, I was like, there's a guy that was really big when I was competing that was a big dog crap training guy. And I couldn't think of his name for a David while. David Henry did too. And then I was finally, David Henry was a great example. Then finally I was like, Dusty Hanshaw. Yep. So I just told him straight up. And then he, he brought up, uh, Neil Hill's training, right? And so I was like, look, I, I don't want to turn this into like me like bashing anybody. I said, but the way that I train, the way that I trained at the end of my career is, in my opinion, the best way to train. And I was, I told him straight up, I go, I was very, very impressed and proud to see that Guy Sister Nino still trains like that and I can't train like that anymore. I have not trained like that in 10 years. I was like, and he still trains like that. And he was basically mopping the floor with Sammy, who's 10 years younger than him, not used to training like that. And I said, so like what I write on paper isn't what it's really like when you do it in the gym, unless you do understand it. how to do it and have a really good training partner. And I said, so I will, in a few weeks, once your body is like recovered from the show, I'll go to the gym with you for a week. I'm not going to work out with you, but I will train you that way. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I would really love that. And so then we got into like all the different training styles and stuff, right? And so my whole thing with like dog crap training was for starters, you have to have a very good spotter and a very good training partner that really understands. Otherwise, you're going to get hurt. That's just the way it is. Yep. Uh, so I, a lot of negatives in that? Four straps, negatives. Okay. It's just very intense. Yeah. Uh, also, my my issue with it, and some of the the devoted DC guys will will argue with me on this, is I just felt there was not enough isolation work. See, I think there's not enough volume in it. Either. There's not enough volume and, and isolation work, right? Yeah. So, when I broke down to Billy, and you just asked me like about training and whatnot, is yes, there are a lot of people that train hard. Sammy definitely trains hard, but it's one thing to train hard or heavy or be strong, but it's another to train with volume and the right kind of form 
cheating in a way that's beneficial yep. versus doing things with full ranges of motion yep. the right way that are beneficial. Yep. And a lot of people have said to me, and it's funny because like young guys now, they're like, why should we listen to you? You're not even fucking big. And I'm not like, anymore. well, yeah. I'm like, when I was 25, I was bigger than most of the 35 you got, yeah. year olds you guys see now. Um, I don't think pe people realize how fucking big you actually were. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, ha, hilarious. <laughs> so people, people are always like, well, how big are you compared to like, Billy or Cody, and I and I I'm, I like kind of like laugh, and I was like, look, I don't ever want to like put anybody down at low. Yeah. These guys, but those guys were tiny. Yeah. You were like what two eighty plus? It's, it's 280, yeah. So I was walking around two eighty most of the time. Yeah. But towards the end of my career, I walked around and I told Billy today, I was always between two fifty nine and two sixty three. Yeah. But I had abs with veins in my stomach at all times. PJ was always <clears throat> fucking lean. The only thing PJ ever had a problem was Glutes. his lower fucking butt cheek yeah. skin. He used to fucking always get so mad at it. It's had just like a skin. skin. <laughs> and I'd be so fucking pissed because Guy would have strided glutes like five weeks out. And he'd be like mad. He'd be like pinching the, stu the, the fat on his stomach. And he'd be like, why do you have a six pack all the time? And I would be like, I will fucking trade <laughs> my, my glutes for your abs. fucking ass any day <laughs> over this fucking bullshit fucking six pack. No one cares. It's all about, about ass. The ass now. It's yeah. all about fucking ass. I know. Well, that's the key to show the conditioning, right? Well, even Steve right Fleckman after fucking the, it was when the nationals was like the one year that I really truly did think that I should have won. Any other year, I, I never thought that. I always thought I, I, I could have been better. Me and Juan shot for Muscle Mag, and uh, Greg James was like, wait a minute, that guy was second, and you were ninth? And I was like, yeah, and he was like, how? And I'm like, he just looks really good on stage. And Steve Blackman actually came up to me, because uh, MD wanted to shoot to me also, and he was like, <laughs> he was, <laughs> PJ, <laughs> you would have won, you, you would have won if you had better glutes. And I remember like looking at him, and Dave was there too. And Dave hated Blackman at that point. They had already had like their fallouts and stuff. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Dave was like, "He knows." And I wasn't like, uh, I wasn't really like working with Dave anymore like that. But we were still like tight, and I yeah. was like still a part of Species and whatnot. And I, I, I like told him I was like, I don't understand. You know, we're going off on a tangent now, and I was like, I try so fucking hard. Like, what is wrong? Like, why can't I get my glutes to look that, that, that way? And Dave goes, it's just skin. You should get it cut off. You should go to a doctor and have it cut off and removed. And I'm not even going to say who he said did that, uh, like a, a, a good female bodybuilder. Oh, really? shit. And you can actually see the little scars on the bottom of her butt. Uh, I'm not going to say her name. I'll no. say it after. And I, I, I remember I wanted to talk to her and be like, fuck, like, where? Who's the doctor? Should I just freaking do that? Because I'm like torturing myself. So anyway, back to your question on like the biggest thing different like then and now is there's so many guys now when I read all these programs and it's all this fucking steroids and shit, right? And I'm not talking bad about steroids. Everyone knows I fucking love steroids too. And somebody else sound bite that. I know. And it's going to be like, make me look bad. But... It was like the, the drugs back then were just like secondary, very simple. It was like all season was like Tez Deca and a little bit of like Anadrol or D ball. Yeah. It was like that was it. Like nobody did. Nowadays, there's like 8 million peptides and yeah. IG. And it's like, what the fuck? And people are always like, oh, do you ever stack like CJC, uh, DAC with this and that? And I'm like, we didn't have any <laughs> of this yeah. no. when I was competing. And you know who else didn't have that? Ronnie, Jay, all the other guys that were yep. really good. Um, so I think there's a number of variables. I think now that people want to figure out what's the magic like juice recipe. The yeah. fastest, yeah. And what's the like weirdest like diet principles and this and that. They try to find a way to make it easy. When they should be focusing on the training. Yeah, I mean, so many people like they're like, oh, I thought you'd be stronger and this and that to me. And and there was a day where I was training really hard. I've told the story before, and I was I was like trying as hard as I could. And Jay Cutler, all hell Jay, who I love, stack it to the ceiling, stack King, it to the ceiling, <laughs> King Pig. We all love Jay. Um, by the anyone that doesn't love Jay Cutler, I have like a problem with. Yeah, I'll, he's I, the I, I, I fucking be nicest with guy yeah. in the world. Yeah. 
He's just awesome. He's the fucking man. Everything, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought because of Jay training, Butler. training, oh, training. He's that distracting. Training. He is. He's that distracting. We were talking about we were talking about like peptides, like what they have, what we don't. Yeah. Oh, so I was training, and uh, it was at Bev's. Was it at Bev's? Anyway, and uh, Jay goes, I was so happy that he even talked to me. He goes, you know you don't have to train like that, right? And I was like, what? And he was like, you don't have to train like that. You're going to get hurt. Because I was like, Jay Cutler was there, and I was like, I better fucking go as heavy as I can <laughs> till yeah. failure. Kind of like how Sammy was, yep, right? Yep, pretty much. And I started paying attention to him, and then I was like watching his videos more and more and more, and it was volume and intensity and a good speed, and I adopted that style of training after that. Still, still heavy, though. Yeah. 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 It's relative. Yeah, to heavy for you. It's relative yeah. to each individual. Yep. Because I, I speak to people all the time that are like, well, I can squat this much and I can do this. And so I'm maximize like, that, right? I was like, okay, but can you do that with only 90 seconds rest, your third exercise in, doing this, doing that? Which is kind of like why I do the, the, the big movements towards the end. When you, when, so when you were talking about the way that you train, which I don't want to, I want people to just see the videos, I was like, Slow mo, like Jordan fist pumping in the back, like so proud that you were saying that and still train like that because everybody gets into all these like fucking fancy ass, like who's the best trainer type things now. And I assumed that you still were training like that anyway because it's like we all try different things over the years. We all it's the only things. way I know how. But that's we just make it that, that's that's simple. And, and I'll say this and then let you finish. And this is because I've been asked this. I think that this is the biggest difference. And it, it, this goes back to social media. There are people that only go to the gym and compete or, or work out just to be a bodybuilder. Yes. Then you have guys that love the gym so much and love working out that bodybuilding on the stage is a byproduct mm -hmm. of being in the gym. That's me. I don't do my damage on stage. I'm not the biggest guy. There are up and comers that'll fuck, that are bigger than me. But you put any of those guys in the gym with me, I don't care who it is. I will bury every yeah. fucking one of them. And that's what I built Guy Sister Nino on was that right there. Not being the best bodybuilder, being a fucking maniac in the gym because that's what me and you did. That's how I came up. That's how I grew up. That's how we trained. And that's what I loved about what I do was that. Like what I did with Sammy, what I did with me and you back in the day, like that's what I enjoy. The stage is cool, but that's what I love. And that's the difference. I actually didn't even like the stage part. And I meet a lot of people now, mm -hmm. and they're like, when I'm on stage, I, it's like where I belong. And I think that's so weird. weird. I think that's so fucking weird. Yeah. Because the meat, to me, this is going to sound really cliche, but like the beauty is in the struggle to get to that yes. last yeah, part, yeah, right? That's why I always had a journal. You did too. Yep. And I could go back to my journal and be like, on this date, I was doing this. And I figured it out for that. And I, I enjoyed that process yep. so much. And most of the time, the stage part was like extremely unfulfilling to me. Right. And then you're like, it's done. Yeah. You're like a couple seconds up there. You know what I mean? It, yeah. You're like, that's it. So I I don't have the, the gym training passion anymore, mostly because of two things. The, the main one being that I'm really fucked up. Injuries, yeah. I really am. Like, I don't like bitch about it a lot, but I'm really, really fucked up. Uh, and then the second one being that my life is just fucking crazy. And so usually when I go to the gym now, it's either really earlier or kind of like later at night. And I'm, I go there just to make sure that I still go because it's important to me. Yeah. Right. But like when, I'm in, when I go, I'm like, all right, I got like 30 minutes to just like out. make this work, boom, 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 and get out. And so it's a much different. Yeah. Now, when we have our gym, I'm very excited about it because I'm going to be like, focus more. Okay, this is my own gym. I can do whatever I want. Whenever I can want. go there whenever I want. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. That's, that's I won't great. ever get back into like competing in bodybuilding again. Most but. guys that go out never come back, and they and I, like Jay's like I love it on this side more than I did competing. Yeah, you get to enjoy more. Yeah, Way I more. I um I love bodybuilding just like you. Yeah, love it. Um. I don't uh, I'm trying to think of. But a, see, if you told me you only had to choose one, the gym or the stage, I'd be like, fucking gym all yeah. day. Yeah. I, I I feel like most of the guys that are that are 
the best bodybuilders, and I'm I'm not. I, I, you, you're an amazing bodybuilder, and and I'm sure there's plenty of guys that that you've talked to that say the same fucking thing. Most of those guys, most of them, are gonna work out until they're 90 years old because they love working out. Yep. And they happen to be very very good. So they'll add bodybuilding. Yep. And that's when you like you look at like people like Dorian Yates, for instance, that are completely different now, but that part of their life is just done. Was that yeah? You know what I mean? Different chapter. You can't like hate on those guys or like be like, oh, he's skinny now or this and that. Like that's just a much different part of his life. Part of their life. Yeah, but it's like being big for you know Christ. I've been doing this since what we're twenty. I'm fucking almost forty. Twenty mm-hmm. years. Like after doing it for so long, like you actually don't want to fucking be that big. Like it's tiring after a while, like eating all the damn food. Like it's when tedious. I'm done, I'll probably be doing fucking like intermittent fasting or something. Cause I'm so sick of eating all this damn food. Yeah. Three meals a day. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I, I, um, it's funny. Cause people always, they remember me from the bodybuilding days. Yeah. Right. And so like, I love, I'm like obsessed with, and it's, it sounds like silly. And I kind of joke about it too. I'm like obsessed with being, I use the word thin. Because skinny just sounds so negative. Yeah. Or lean. Um, the one they always But use. lean is, I always associate lean with bodybuilding, right? Mm-hmm. So I always joke around, I'm like, thin is in. And for me, I actually just really like being able to put on like a nice suit and have it be about like my face and my suit. Okay. As silly as that sounds, because when you're a bodybuilder, it's like, look at this huge ass motherfucker trying to wear that fucking yeah. suit. It's like Ronnie Coleman with those like fucking yeah. bright yellow suits purple and shit. Suits, yeah. Purple suits. And a lot of people will be like, who cares? Who cares? But I, what matters to me is, is being healthy and living a long time and feeling good. Yeah. And honestly, like, unfortunately, most of the time I, I don't feel good. Yeah. And a lot of it is because of what I did when yeah. I was bodybuilding. So a lot of the stuff that I, I put out now and the videos that I do now is to try to make sure that people don't let that happen. Yeah, they prevent it. If I knew a lot of this shit, I was talking about it with somebody uh, when you guys were training the other day. I was like, if we knew about a lot of this shit. Oh, God. When we were like 24, 25. There's so much stuff you wouldn't have done. Yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, what did you, because we've been like <laughs> rambling on the about one subject mm-hmm. what did you think of of like a couple days like being at flex's gym being around blackstone like we're not going to get too into like all the other stuff that's right. going on down the road but like what did you think of the, the couple days being here well i've i had a blast down here with you guys just to see you guys reconnect and i've laughed along with you we all joke <laughs> around and have similar senses of humor so it just clicks um but i've you know, enjoyed every second of it. I've wanted to go to Flex's gym for years now. Oh, so you, I, I actually didn't even get a chance to talk about this with you. You've never been there before. No, I right? yeah, was like, to me, that was, I was saying to him, like, what you see on Instagram, like, that looks better than the Rocks gym. Yeah. You know, some at that level, when you see Flex's, it's like, this is like a paradise. That's an iron paradise right yeah. there. Yeah. So, you know, we obviously spend a lot of time with you. So we, we know you, like, as a friend, not just a, a videographer. Yes. Without, like, making a joke out of it. Okay. How much of a, like, bodybuilding, like, fanboy would you say you are? Me? Yeah. Well, I've competed. Mm-hmm. I'm also very, you know, I'm very much a fan of the sport, so I'm, I think I'm pretty well-versed in all aspects of it. So, Flex Lewis to you is what? Oh, he's, you know, he's one of the, he's one of the greatest ever. He's like the cat's ass, as my yeah. grandma would say. He's one, the, he's, one of the, he's one of the goats. So yeah. he is, to me, I, I, yeah, like, to is. me, he is, too. Yeah, so yeah. taking him out as, like, just being friends with the guy. Yeah, it's weird. Like, when I think of, like, bodybuilding, I actually can break it down into division. Absolutely. And so when I think of 212, I, I actually, it's very funny. And uh, I wonder who else will think of it like this. So when I think of that division, I always think of Kevin English, right? And well, it was 202, right? 202 yeah. was when it first started, right? And I, I, I remember, like, because a lot of people don't understand, like, the, the outside people, they're like, what, is, what are these divisions, right? Mm-hmm. So basically what I try to explain to people is it wasn't fair, in, a, in essence, to a lot of the really short guys because – regardless of some of the greatest short guys ever, like Lee Priest and, and, and Sean Ray, mm-hmm. that there was just taller, more enormous guys that 
were getting the nod because of the, the height and everything. Size, yeah. So they started this different division. Franco Colombo, rest in peace. Yep. Uh, well, they used to do back then. They used to they do bring, bring them both like out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but then they would have to the yeah, lower like a, under two hundred go against the over hundred. That's why they Arnold won against Franco. At the New York Pro, it was Kai Green and Kevin English. Kevin oh, wow. English won hit the two uh, two hundred two. Kai Green won the show, and then there was an overall, overall. for the winner. It was Kai Green versus uh, Kevin English. Remember that? Yeah. Like two thousand seven. I think I wish was that was the that. only year they ever did that. Yeah. I think. One. It was one and done. Wow. So Kevin English was a freak, right? A fucking. He just had a ton of muscle on him. Freak. And I believe he won three times. And you also had David Henry, right? Yeah. And so then they started this 212 division, right? And when Flex Lewis won that division, I had a conversation with him. I, I know a lot of people did. Steve Weinberger, everybody. And it was basically like, okay, you, you can be the champion of this division for pretty much as long as you want. Yeah. And uh, there were some good battles over the years. Yeah, but it was always. I think a lot of people yeah. wanted it to be like Eduardo Correa. A lot of people wanted to be like, you know, he's more shredded. This if, if Eduardo didn't suffer the injuries yeah. he suffered, that's why his physique gets thrown off yeah. now because of the tears right. and the this and that. The atrophies in certain Yeah, areas, but he was right? – Eduardo was one of the most gr- – Eduardo to me was like the Andre Munzer of like the two twelve. Mm-hmm. Like he just got that, that fucking grainy. Shredded. It was crazy. Um, so to me, it, it's a little bit unfortunate because a lot of people don't get that division. They don't even get it. Yeah. So they don't know how fucking good he is yeah. or was. Right. So the reason I I wanted to hear your perspective of this is. To me, I, I put him up there as like, you know, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. So you've never been in his gym before. You got to see it. You got to be like, wow, this is Flex Lewis's gym. Like yeah, where he where trains every day, trains at every day. Yeah. Like that had to be pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's very monumental for me. That's to me. That was like going to Venice and seeing the golds. And there's a you lot know, of memories right there. There's there. a lot of You're Dallas welcome, stuff there, Thank too. You. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, PJ also is the one who in- introduced me to Jay Cutler. So I'm like, just being that a as well. Right but yeah, you, you've. But too, it, a lot. even even Flex's thing, you you still get like it being Flex's gym. There's still a lot of memories there. Like there's a lot of stuff with Dallas that's still there. Yeah, yeah. that I'm sure is cool. Like that you never saw. Yeah. like that Flex never took down. There's a lot of history. And in that anyway, gym. for the small amount of time he's had that gym, there's a lot of history in there yeah. already. Yeah, I've trained there many many fucking times, and it just doesn't. Get you old. know what's crazy to me is to see like how many of my friends that I came up with, PJ included, and like we not maybe all went in the same direction. But we all stayed in the industry that we loved, and we, it's cool that we're all successful so in our own fucking different yeah. way. Yeah, you know, like that's that makes me proud. Like even like Juan, Morel, yeah. like just seeing him and Karen like just kill it with the cookies. Yeah, I'm like that's my fucking dude. Yeah. You know, just cool. like it, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because it's like you want to see everyone around you. Yeah, do well. man. The, and, the and people that don't, and, that says a lot. And that's I think the problem. And I know people are gonna be like, "What is? He, what do? What do you mean? Like the young generation?" The young generation is all about one-upping each other. Yeah. Like, they just want to have more likes, more comments, more followers. And, like, me, PJ, like, the old, like, we're fucking almost 40 years old. We're like, damn, like, we want all our fucking friends to, like, be successful. And right. it's that, I think that's another disconnect now, is that everybody's trying to one-up each other rather than, like, put be a fucking down. team player. They not only you know? one-up each other, they want to put others down. Yeah. It's like everyone can eat and, you know... There's depend, enough fucking, the there's enough seats at the table. And there everyone that's still I mean. can, but the, it's lost forever. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, we should probably start wrapping it up. But this brings me to I'm going to get serious for a minute. This brings me to something that I've been talking about it a lot. And social media, although I have built businesses on it. So have you. So have you. Yeah. Um, it has changed the world so dramatically. Bad. And good for me. In no, it's many good ways, for us too. In many, many ways, it's good. But I will tell you this: there will be fifty years from now, uh, therapists will have different books that they study in in school. To how to handle this? They will handle things much differently. The world is 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 completely different. Relationships are different. I so, talked about this with my mom last. Social night. media fucking murdered. Yeah, relationships. All trust issues mm-hmm. are through social media now. And you have to, you you have to. So people always say, "I wish it could be like my grandma, my grandpa." And I make jokes. I I, I feel bad because I say this to myself. I'm like, 
you know what? Your grandma and grandpa would have cheated on each other if they had Instagram. Because they would have been DMing the other grandmas and grandpas and fucking being like, yo, what do you guys got going on later? And I say it in a funny way, but... There's some truth to it, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's just the way shit is now. Yeah. It's just so easy. fucking easy yeah. mm -hmm. to access all these things. I don't think our brains have adjusted to it all the way yet. Now, without getting overly like philosophical, you take somebody that's like born now. They're going to be raised completely, completely different. Yeah. different than somebody that was born 40 years ago right. or 60 years ago. Yep. It's just evolution of the world. But when social media really hit, we'll, we'll say the last 10 years, yeah. the world has changed so much. All, all media is based on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl commercials look, are not even worth it. Anymore. Look at the quarantine. Yeah. Look at doctors' visits over Zoom calls yeah. and it's, everything's virtual. It's it's just a dramatically different world. So to bring it back to bodybuilding, I think bodybuilding is dramatically different. Absolutely, now. I, I tell so everybody right now, I'm like bodybuild. Like I love the sport, and I'll forever love the sport. But that doesn't mean I have to like everything about it. And it's it just and not. That, I don't want to say it's bad. It's just. It's not what it was for me back when I started competing in 2003 and when I turned pro in 2008 and even like 2010, 11, 12, like it was just, I, I can't, if you weren't in it, I can't explain it. It was just fucking different. No. And people will always say like old timers. Were my era is better. Yeah. better. Well, even me, I just, just at 28, I did my first show when I was 16. That was 2010. Yeah. yeah. I, there was no social media yet. I was just for the love of magazines. I remember watching the pay-per-views of, yep. you know, all the Olympias and it's just like, how it's become entirely digital yeah. now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no getting away from it. You know what's crazy? Because of social media and the world and everything else, this is very true and it's very important. And I, I'm, I say this just, just to put out a fact, bodybuilding, as far as the IFBB and the NPC, is in a little bit of trouble because why not just be famous on your phone right. rather than go and compete and go in front of people, especially with weird ass pandemics and shit. It's not as appealing anymore. And yeah, you know? that's going to hold you back from it. Then I'm going to start an OnlyFans page. There you go. I have an OnlyFans page. I don't do anything on it. I actually troll on OnlyFans. I, I do. There's a PG yeah. Brown OnlyFans. That really is me. It actually says on my phone, on my OnlyFans, go look at it. It says, yes, this really is me. Because people message me and they're like, yo, is that really you on OnlyFans? Yeah. So I got a question because I, 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 maybe it's just because I'm old and But, but and people stupid. do make money that aren't putting the nudes and stuff out there. Yeah. They use it for Absolutely. this little, is that I can put okay, regular content on there. Is that really what it is? Is that like for just like chicks to post like naked shit? It's premium stuff. Like it's, it's, it's paying for the content. Yeah. Like back when like me and PJ had websites like pjbrawn.com and guysesvino.com, like we had like... VIP section, which was like our blogs and like workout yeah, videos. Much. Yeah, it's like, that now. Huh? It's pretty much that now. It's workout videos too? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's so anyone is can it, have. Uh, people, is it almost like a private Instagram that you have to like subscribe like, to to pay? It's the new Patreon. Yeah, but yeah. there's. A, it it seems like more fucking naked chicks it is. than anything. It's, they, it's that's very that's popular. Listen, it's. it's it, it started out as, as a very niche based thing and it caught fire. And so what it is now. It is Facebook and Instagram have very strong guidelines. Censorship. Right? So on OnlyFans, there is not really censorship. So you can put what you want out and you can charge what you want. So if you want to put some raunchy ass shit out, people will pay to see that and you can decide what you want to charge people for that. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? Honestly, if I ever have a daughter, I swear to God. I, 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 I'll tell you right now, I say fucking do it. Why not? I, I, I'll tell you right now, and I have no problem fucking saying this. And there's people that are going to listen to this, and they're going to be like, they're, they're, I promise you there'll be at least one person that listens to this that says, oh. I respect that. And there'll be a lot of people that say, fuck this guy. Yep. But I go on OnlyFans, and I actually, even girls that I know, I will pay and see some of their shit. And they will reach out to me, and this is not to like make my girlfriend or anybody else mad, and be like, oh my God, why did you pay for that? I would have sent it to you for free. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, business is business. Yeah. 
I'm not going to ask you to send me fucking free shit. I, I wanted to see what you're doing that's, on here. That's even worse. Yeah. yeah. If you were to ask, that would be yeah. even worse. I'm not going to be like, yo, can I fucking... And, and, and it's, it's funny because I have a lot of girls that are part of Blackstone Labs that... Have them. Have them. And then they're like, oh my God, like I'm so embarrassed because you went on my OnlyFans. I'm like, don't be embarrassed. You're, if you're putting it out there, own that shit. Yeah. Own that shit. The only reason that I'm not doing some crazy ass shit on my OnlyFans is because I guarantee... With my FDA suit and everything else, yeah. it it would fucking hurt me. Yeah. But yeah. but I don't listen. If I know people, I'm not gonna say their names. I'm not. Exaggerating. Oh, I know motherfuckers make bank. I'm not exaggerating. I know people, real talk, that are making over six figures a month, a fucking month, mm-hmm. and way more than that too, on OnlyFans, blowjobbing, masturbating, doing whatever. Fucking why wouldn't you do that? That's crazy. Why wouldn't you? Who cares? You're doing what you want to do. Yeah. And you can make that much money. That's why so many adult stars, they have OnlYfans now too. They do it themselves. They don't have I'm contracts like, or studios or anything. Yeah. Just I'm thinking of me standing like... In direct, a, direct to consumer. I had an idea. I'm by so, the way, we're, we're going to fucking... I don't want to make you guys... I'm literally this. thinking about like me standing naked in a bedroom with like holding a thing of like luck. <laughs> what? <laughs> I will gladly Only pay. Fans. I will gladly play, pay nine ninety nine for that. So nine ninety nine, bitch. That only gets you fucking access to the site. I have friends. <laughs> I have friends that's that are in. Fake, yeah. I have friends that are in the adult world that have straight up told me they're like, yo, why don't you start an OnlyFans where you like jerk off and shit? Because the gay guys will pay so much money for that. And I'm I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. But I have too many other things to, to deal with now than, than worry about getting into that. But I, if you, and if you can, ask me to edit that, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm done. If you ask me to edit that, I am not running that for you. That's it. That's, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. I, I had a, and, and I, I, I'm not making this up. I had an idea to manage girls when OnlyFans was first starting i swear i'm not making this up that wanted to like girls that were doing like adult type of stuff and not really getting any money for it Mm -hmm. i had an idea of like starting a management agency and actually the girl i'll fucking say her name i don't even care queen rem savannah santos is her name now she was uh first becoming a big deal she was a part of blackstone labs Mm -hmm. and i was like telling her i'm like yo you could make so much fucking money if you did shit the right way you need a good manager in the end, um, part of ways with Blackstone Labs, and she actually has an OnlyFans now, and guess what? I subscribed to it. She's hot. I got no problem fucking doing it. And so back then, when when we parted ways, I was like, you know what? I'm going to manage these girls. These girls could be making so much money, I'll take a little piece of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, guess what? Now there are agencies that manage these OnlyFans girls, and they're making fucking That's bank. That's crazy. Yeah, sure. And I'm like... And people are like, you're so full of shit. You didn't have that idea. And I'm like, I swear I did because, you know, Blackstone Labs, we've had some hot ass girls for a long time. And people are like, oh, this has nothing to do with bodybuilding. I'm like, shut up. And now all these girls are going out and they're kicking ass and making money where five years ago they weren't making shit other than likes on Instagram. So why wouldn't you go and get paid for that now? I got no problem with it. You're going to post it anyway. Can make money for it. Make money for it. Yeah. Um, it's fucking world, man. It's crazy, right? It's fucking insanity. Did you bring your mask? For what? <laughs> the this fucking world. airport? <laughs> yeah, dude. I have Blacks and Labs masks. I know. It's, I just I hate, um, I hate that I have to grab my mask before I leave the car. I know. Ho- hopefully not much. I'm longer. glad that you actually feel that way because I know that we're not going to get into politics. No. You're, uh, what, 10 years younger than us? Yeah, I just turned 28. Okay, so Guy and I. 38. Yeah. So, so, guy and I, similar personalities. <laughs> the fucking mask shit. I can't fucking stand it, right? Dude, we no. went to the fucking but diner. A lot of, and made us put it on just to walk, to walk in to the and table and take it off. I've seen. I'm, I'm like, so the, the reason I'm bringing this up and you saying that is, a lot of the younger guys that work for me yeah. and a lot of the younger people I know, they're they've bought into the mask. Oh. And they're masked everywhere they go. Yeah. And people are like dicks to me when I make jokes about the masks. Right. And I, I'm, I say it all the time. I will fucking drink a glass of Corona right in front of all your faces. And 
I will. Give me a glass of fucking COVID-19. I'll oh, I thought you right meant now. the beer. No, no, uh, I don't drink anymore. <laughs> I don't drink anymore. <laughs> give me a lime. I will give drink me some cool lime. a fucking glass of COVID-19 in front of all your faces. And I'll tell you right now, if I could trade the goddamn Epstein bar, which I have for life now, that makes you feel fucking horrible when it mm-hmm. acts up, or to all the people who get AIDS, or to the fucking over 50% of people that get some form of cancer that you almost always fucking die from. Ask them if they'll trade what they got for some fucking, I had it for fucking seven weeks. For some fucking COVID-19. Yeah. That everyone's got to wear masks and shit I for know. now. Well, me, I, I come from a family full of chiropractors, so they're all into natural healing. Yep. So it's building your own immunity. Absolutely. But while you're wearing that mask, it's actually hindering your yes. immunity. And listen, because I'm not a doctor, doesn't matter how intelligent I may be or how much I've read. When I've tried to explain this to people, they get so mad. Yeah. They're like, fucking steroids aren't going to save you from fucking COVID-19. I'm like, you just don't understand the human body the way that I do. Yeah. Or fucking corrupt politics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Let's let's get off that, man. Yeah. I'm just glad that Joe doesn't buy into all the masks. Yeah. Come on. I'm smarter than that. I love my He doesn't buy into the mask, but he walks around with a real muscle. I love my guys, by the way. With a real muscle. He doesn't buy into the mask, but he has ones with real muscle on him. <laughs> we have <laughs> 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 You're such a saboteur. <laughs> Wait, you know, it's, it's only hypocritical if it's like the fact is that it's mandatory. I may not believe in them, but if I can't get into the store, I gotta wear it. Uh, I agree. That's all I'm it busting is. your fucking. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Busting your yeah, little but that's the only reason I made them. It's like if I gotta make them. I mean, if I gotta wear it, I'm gonna. Let me tell it. you something. I was in the gym the other day, and made me proud. Old guy waiting to use a machine, probably 65, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm hurrying up, because I'm like respectful anyway. And I'm like, I'm almost done, sir. I'm just gonna wipe this down for you. And he goes, puts his hand out for the people that are not watching the YouTube. He goes, don't worry about it. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe it all down. And he goes, I ain't afraid of that shit. Don't worry about it. I don't want to wait for the machine anymore. And I wasn't really that sweaty That's anyway. Awesome. And I go, I, I was like, ar, ar, ar. I was like confused, yeah. especially because he was older. Because by the way, I don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I said the same thing to people with that. Yeah, I really don't. And he go, he he goes, I don't want to wait for the machine anymore. And I was like, all right. And so I got up and he, he got on and he was. There's a, there's a place and I'm going to, I'll shout out. I was I'm, like, good for you. I don't even know the fucking guys, but it's called Dominic's. It's a pizza place by my house where you had pizza from. Yeah. If you walk in, it's hysterical. It says above the counter, the pizza is usually like 12 to 15 bucks. It yeah. says mask price. Twenty dollars. <laughs> so if you yeah. walk in with a mask, he charges you an extra five fucking bucks. <laughs> oh, so it's not the price to buy a mask. It's if no, you're it's, it's that, if you wear a mask, mask, you get you get charged an extra yeah. five bucks for a pizza. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, w- I went in there. Did no one had them on? They would no, just sit in the nope, corner eating, nope, eating my pizza yep. by myself. I went great. into a place the other day. A, a guy from uh, God, I love that place too. Talia's fucking. I gotta take you to this place. Tal- Talia's fucking uh, Tuscan. Well, you fucking... can't because we take off in an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> Bro, the, it's, it's the guy's got all Yankees and fucking Soprano shit on the wall. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's a New Yorker. It's been there for 20-something years. It's right by my house. I don't know how I didn't fucking know about it. They make fucking huge, huge, huge fucking grinders like that you get from fucking like New York. Wedges, hoagies, wherever the fuck. Yeah, I know, I know what a grinder is. I don't know what a, a grinder, grinder is. A grinder is a fucking hero. That's the app you use in your free time. Grinder, what's that? Uh, oh, right. I, oh I know what that is. <laughs> grinder, I think, is more like um, Connecticut. Uh, grinder, like, the like grind- Boston. Yes, Grinder. Right. They're all like a, a hero, a, a sub, sub yeah. a leg, yeah, sub. or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, fucking hoagie. Just like they call it in Connecticut, the, the liquor store, they call it the Packy store. The Packy store. The Packy store. store. Yeah, yeah, gotta go to the when I was in college, really? I was like, the what? The UPS store? The package? No, you like, go the fucking, store. you're going to buy luggage? Yeah. <laughs> like, package? I'm so confused. I haven't used that term in a long time. Package. Um... I went in there, right, and I walked in, and I and I was like, I go, ah, fuck, and I like was fumbling around. And the guy's looking at me, and I'm like fumbling around, fumbling around, and then I pull my mask out of my pocket, and I was like, dropping it on the floor, and I'm I like picking up, and I was like, do I gotta wear this? And he goes, do I gotta wear one? <laughs> and I'm like looking around, and nobody else was in there. The guys that were working were in the one, and I was like, I don't care. And he goes, I, I only care if you care. And I was like, no, no, I don't care. And then we just we kind of like laughed. 
And then that we, we shared that little moment together. So you have those people, then you have the ones that wear the fucking mask in the car while spraying Lysol with the window shut. With the, yeah. the plastic thing over the, yeah, the top it's of fucking, it. Did you see the guys on the airplane that had those? Yeah, they had both. They walked in like fucking astronauts. Yeah. Oh, I got, I got into it on social media the other day because people don't think as an owner of a company that I should post stuff like this. I don't care. I've been offending people my whole life. So <laughs> I uh, put out a thing that I thought was very funny. Donald Trump Jr. posted this thing that said, if you're wearing a mask in your car while driving alone, don't worry about hanging a Biden, a Biden sticker in your car. We already know. And I was like, that's hilarious. I reposted this. And a bunch of people were like, that's not true. That's fucking bullshit, blah, blah. And then I wrote back to those people, so you're voting for Trump? And they were like, no, fuck Trump. And I'm like, oh, there you go. <laughs> that, that's, I thought it was funny. That's why I posted it. That's the only reason why. I'm not trying to get into anything political. I just, if you write back to me... I am actually uh, voting for Trump, but I don't want to take my mask off. Well, then we can have a, a, a conversation about See, that. See, the fact is you f just found it funny. Yeah. But people... because you, personally. Because yeah. you, but it's funny. But if you were a comedian, you could say that and oh, you're, yeah. you're completely fine. Dude, the other day I left Publix, and it was like two days after I made that post. I'm getting all excited now. <laughs> I was he just, car. You guys just didn't see PJ just beat Epstein Bar. <laughs> yeah, right he just left it's his fucking seconds. soul. <laughs> he went, boom, I'm back. <laughs> I was fucking driving in my car and I had to go. Uh, there's this place called The Hookup that I get my Kratom shots from, right? So I, it's very close to Publix. So I, I leave Publix. You have to wear a goddamn mask. I'm like in a rush. I get in my car and I'm driving and I'm driving to The Hookup and I'm almost there and I go, God damn. I fucking am driving with my mask on. <laughs> and I took Forgot. it off and I started laughing. And I was like, if anyone saw this right after that post, hypocrite. I made, hypocrite. they'd be like, look at this fucking hypocrite. Yep. And I kind of started laughing to myself and I was like, oh, that's karma. <laughs> right? I'm going to put um, a Biden sticker on your Ferrari. Yeah. All right. We got to wrap it up. Yep. Uh, thank you guys so much for doing this. We'll do a lot more. Thank you for everything from this weekend. Yeah, it was it's fucking amazing. Blast, yeah, it was awesome. It's probably the three funnest days of any fucking this year I've ever fucking been with. Yeah, at blast. <laughs> a lot more to come. A lot, lot and fucking good food. Marissa fucking cooked up some yeah. fucking she banging did. ass food. Your mom brought the Danish. I was gonna the give steaks. you a fucking prop the on the steaks. Give me a fucking Braun. minute. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not gonna give him so much credit. He owes me a fucking iPhone. Right there. <laughs> Left that motherfucker in a monsoon for 15 minutes. I can't even charge the bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Love you guys. Uh, let's get you out of here. It's 1.15. And uh, our flight takes off in an hour. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Peace out. Bye. Later.